Hello everyone, so welcome back. So today we're going to talk about complex numbers. So it's our last chapter, chapter 13, complex numbers. Before we can talk about complex numbers, of course we need to go over the definition of what are the real numbers, the ones that we're used to. Um, so in here, this chapter, we really want to talk about numbers from a geometric point of view. So everything that is done here will have a geometric origin, so including the real numbers. So here, um, the first thing, uh, one way to introduce or talk about real numbers is to first draw an infinite line. So here below I have my real line, so we have an infinite line, both sides going to plus or minus infinity, so the standard direction is to the right, so that's my real line. And then on that line, we choose a point that we call the origin, and to that point, we assign it to be the number zero. So here is my point that I choose. This will correspond to the number zero. Then we choose a length for the unit. And then if you move one unit to the right, this will correspond to the number one. So I have my unit length here in green. So one unit long, and this will correspond to the number one. And then if you go one unit to the left, you will get to the number minus one. So one unit to the left, and you get the number minus one. And then in general, if you have a strictly positive number, if you move k unit to the right, so if you move k units to the right, you're going to get to the point that represent the number k. And if you move k units to the left, you're going to get to the number to the point that will correspond to minus k. So for each real number, we can assign it a unique point on the real line and vice versa. So we have this correspondence between points on this infinite line and the real numbers. Now let's go beyond real numbers. Um, so what we're doing here to introduce real complex numbers is to start with the real numbers. So we have our real line. And of course, you're drawing, you're drawing this real line on a piece of paper. So on a 2D surface, or if you're using more fancy words on a Cartesian plane. So um, since this line lives in a plane, and since every point on that line corresponds to a real number, well, the geometric idea here is to then associate to every point on the Cartesian plane a complex number. And the first interesting number um, that is out of the real number universe is that number that is one unit right above the origin. And that number, we are going to call it the imaginary number. And the notation for it, of course, is going to be this i. So I is the emergent number, so it's one, it's the point that is one unit above the origin. And here, a small remark here, I, to some extent, if you're just thinking about this as point in the Cartesian plane, is just a point zero, one. So to some extent, this is just a different use of notation. So that point that is one unit above the origin is I, and now if you're picking any points on the Cartesian plane, so here I'm picking the number, this point here, so this point will have an x coordinate, a will have a y coordinate, b, and as a complex number, the notation for it is to going to say that z is equal to a plus bi, where a is the real part or the x coordinate, b is the imaginary part or the y coordinate, so to every single point on the Cartesian plane, we can associate a complex number. And again here, to some extent, now if you're talking about the number a plus bi, it's the same thing initially as talking about the point ab. So this is just like the complex notation versus just points in R2. So it's the same, same, same thing. It's just different notation, but of course, our points in the Cartesian plane here or the complex numbers are going to be richer because they're going to have like uh, algebraic structures that are specific to the complex number system that goes beyond simply talking about points on the Cartesian plane. 
So when you're going to study points in the plane as um, complex numbers, so the x-axis is called the real axis, the y-axis that we denote by IR is called the imaginary axis. But again, here, to some extent, you can think about the imaginary axis as the y-axis. It's really, really just different notation, and the real axis is just the good old x-axis. So if we look at this formally, so definition, what are the complex numbers? So a complex number Z is any number of the form Z is equal to A plus BI, where both A and B are real numbers, and the symbol I is for the imaginary number, the one that is one unit above the origin. The set of all points on the plane viewed as complex numbers will be denoted by C with this double bar. So we call the A part the real part, the B part, the imaginary part, and uh, any real number K, of course, can be written as K plus zero I. So this is, of course, one way to see that the real numbers is a strict subset of the complex numbers. And also another piece of uh, terminology. So any number of the form, simply a multiple of I, so any number that is simply on the Y axis is called purely imaginary. So again, here, to some extent, um, right now, we're talking about complex numbers, but we could be talking about points on the Cartesian plane, or because we've seen vectors before, we could be talking about vectors in R2. So if you have a point, if you have a point, let's say this point here, the point 3, 1, well, you could talk about the point 3, 1, or you could talk about the vector OP. So suppose this is the point P here, well, that point P is 3, 1, but of course, if you're looking at the vector from the origin to P, that will be also the vector 3, 1. But now we have another way to see this vector slash point on the, on, in R2 in the Cartesian plane using the complex number notation. So to some extent, we did, we're really studying something that we're very familiar with which is simply points in the Cartesian planes or vectors in R2. And we're just changing you know, the name of the game and we're using different notation and different terminology, but everything at this point is similar to what we've seen before. When we're studying objects in mathematics, like vectors, matrices, numbers, and now complex numbers, the first thing we ask ourselves is, um, can we do operation on them? So the first set of operation are addition and subtraction. So just a remark here, um, even if I just, if I just mentioned that, um, there's no difference between, you know, points on the Cartesian plane and complex numbers up to notation and terminology. I mean, this is still true for real numbers where Real numbers are initially just points on a line, but they're way more than this because we can do operation on them. We can add them up, we can multiply, and of course, look at the inverse operations like subtraction and division. So there's there's really an algebraic structure behind these points that we, we can study, and we want to introduce the same sort of structure, but for complex numbers. So the first set of operation, so is addition and subtraction. And here the idea is that if you start with two complex numbers, so say let's say Z is A plus BI and W is C plus DI, if you want to add, if you want to add or subtract them, well algebraically basically what you do is you add the real parts together and you add the imaginary parts together and you get your addition and subtraction the intuitive way. So if you have Z plus W, you're going to get A plus C plus B plus D in bracket I. So, um, and this addition, or of course, uh, subtraction is completely borrowed from the fact that we know how to add vectors in R2. So if you have your first, if you have your first vector Z, let's say here we have one plus three I, so that's my first vector Z. That would be one three and i have my second vector w that corresponds to the complex number two plus two i if you add them together well one plus
plus 2, that gives me my 3, and 3i plus 2i, that gives me my 5i. And of course, geometrically speaking, if you take the vector that corresponds to z, and then you add the vector that corresponds to w, you're going to get that vector that corresponds to the addition, just like we did before with vector addition. So it's the exact same thing for addition or subtraction. The geometric nature of the operations is uh, are completely borrowed from what we've seen with vectors. So very, very straightforward stuff. And it's, to some extent, just review again. So here's a bunch of examples. Let's say we want to add 3 plus 5i with the number 2 minus 7i. So you just take the real parts together. So you get 3 plus 2. And you add the imaginary parts together. So 5i minus 7i. So you get 5 minus 7. And then you just simplify. So you get 5. Uh, so 3 plus 2 is 5. And then 5 minus 7 is minus 2. And you have your result 5 minus 2i. And I'll let you just work uh, the other three examples. It's very, very straightforward stuff. And to some extent, you could see these operations as if you're adding two uh, linear equations, like 3 plus 5x plus 2 minus 7x, as long as you bring the constants together, which corresponds to the real parts, and the multiple of x's, which corresponds to the imaginary part. So it's the algebraic structure, the way you add or subtract complex numbers, it's review.